tell you to work with a notepad and a pen so that you can write your questions while I'm doing the presentation so you can ask them in this session. So are there any questions that you'd like me to think about? I may not be able to answer, but I can think about it. Yes, anybody has any questions? I have a question. Yes, go ahead, Kjana. Uh, my question is, um, I think some, some mention was made about the skills and knowledge set that yes. is required in order to ensure that there is a sustainable fishery. And um, my question is, what would formulate that, that sort of skill set if you were to um, write down a list of skills that would that would fit that, or um, for example, um, as a leader in one of the organizations, if you were to hire in talent and say you need to put out a job advertisement or something of that sort, what sort of skills and, and knowledge would you be looking for for somebody to fit that that category? Okay, so in terms of leadership, in order to promote the skill set contributing to sustainable fisheries, I would say we look more at the skill set that currently exists in the fishery sector. So in the fishery sector, we have fishermen who are skilled observers. We have to be. Yes. So we observe not only what is happening in the environment, but we observe the interactions. Otherwise, if we don't observe, we cannot become successful. So that's one skill set to be able to, to observe well and to develop a response. So we also are able not only to observe, but to develop a response. This is part of the skill set we need to fish. Now, how does that translate to sustainable fisheries? When we bring that skill set to the table, it, it allows us to be able to make a useful contribution. Well, there are other, skill, there are other aspects as well, but I'm, I'm just giving you some examples. Yes, KJ, Anna? So, a fisher sees what is happening in the natural environment, and he comes to a, a fisheries management forum, and the idea that is being promoted is different from what he sees on a day-to-day -day basis. So he brings that knowledge and skill to the table so that it is factored into the management the regime. But without leadership in organizations, fishers are not able to bring that to ensure or promote sustainable fisheries. And also knowledge. So knowledge is different to skill, but, but knowledge you acquire from doing something, from research, personal research, etc. Fishers must acquire knowledge in order to fish. So I acquire knowledge about deep slope fisheries so that I can go and get some to sell to make some more money. Yeah? So that type of a thing. That answers your question, Kejana? Did you know? Okay, Jana, did, did you hear the response? I, I... You would have to play back the recording. Hi, okay. Mitch, is it possible for me to get a very short question in? Yeah, man, we have some minutes. We have some time, definitely. We have a couple minutes left, quite okay. a bit, yeah. It's a general, broad-based question. Are leaders born or it can be taught? Ah, so that's... 
So the school, the school that the school of thought that currently exists is that they're both. So there's some <laughs> persons with natural ability. Like oh, the question was. Hello. Are leaders born leaders, or are Hello? they? Can they be taught? Can you acquire leadership skills? And are you born with leadership skills? Are they? So the answer is so the answer to, from from my research and what I've seen is that you have both coming into play. So some leaders are natural; they're gifted, but they still must acquire some skill sets in order to be good leaders. But they come with some natural ability. There are other leaders who work at being leaders and become great leaders as well, even though they, did, they didn't come with a natural ability. So we have both. Gary? Yeah, I think you've answered my question very well. Thank you. Are there any other, any other questions that you'd like me? Anybody else? Mitch, I wasn't going to ask as I'm just observing. It's Maria. But I wanted to throw yes, the question out and maybe to the rest of the participants as well, just to ask them, do they think that there is ageism associated with leadership? So what I mean is, is there discrimination on the grounds of a person's age? I see here on the call that there are some younger faces and I just wonder how they are dealing with an industry that tends to be predominantly made of older persons. That's what they say fisheries comprise older persons. There are not many young people entering fisheries. So it'd be nice to hear that kind of um, feedback and maybe you can answer as well. I'd love to hear from Louis and Thailand, definitely, and, and the other the others um and that kgn as well yeah um yeah is there any discrimination did you get a question from maria so basically because of your Lewis? age because you're coming in more as what people may term as youth do you find difficulty in leading your organizations in having members listen to you Can everybody hear me? Yeah, yes, go ahead. Tyler? Yes, I totally agree. Especially with the older generation, they tend to look down on the youth. But I've come <laughs> to re the realization that with knowledge, with knowledge brings respect. So the more knowledgeable you use about something, the more... <laughs> Respect comes with it. The more you're able to convey a message, the more you're able to speak, and your words be um, wouldn't fall on deaf ears. They would take it. They would take it into consideration. Most may not like it. People don't like to be showed up, but with knowledge, knowledge bridges bridges the, the gap in age. How about you, Lewis? Well, I totally agree that um, being jovial is not so much of a, um, an advantage in, in some aspects. But um, I normally like to tweak things into um, to, to my shortcomings. Uh, when it comes to being very young, yes, you tend to get a lot of fishermen who are, um, tend to despise that. Um, with regards to their seniority in the profession. But um, since I've been doing some fisheries observer programs and some other um, management aspects, even where as part of a climate smart agricultural program where it involved helping fishermen in terms of getting um, grant aids and stuff, so getting with them and speaking with them, and that's what that's um, normally when I 
engage with them. I don't engage with them as if I know anything. Normally, I am the one who is asking them questions of based on what they know. And since that is the case of in terms of communication, I think they, with time, they, their guard is being let down with me. And we, we have a very good rapport when it comes to um, approaching fishermen. So after a while, they've seen me and they've become used to me or let's say accustomed so things like when i probably need to get certain things done they are uh, willing to comply uh, based on the relationship i i built with them so i don't know if this is of any use but uh it's working for me for now. no very 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 useful thanks louis but i think kj has a, this similar kind of a contribution i, I i've seen her making some comments in the chat but Kijana, can you share verbally as well? Yes, Mitch, I'm on. You can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Go ahead. Okay, so for me, when I started with Goodwill about ten years, um, just having hit twenty, just a little bit before that. Um, so for me, it was it was tough at first because not just because of of, of age but two other reasons is because the the well the whole um thing of it is one one I was very young I was more coming to a more male dominated environment environment so uh, my skill set was in management not in in the industry and so that made it quite difficult to actually get your foot in. But what I found is that 